Tableau 22.2 Tableau Prep now allows you to use an increased list of file attributes to do wildcard unions inside of Tableau Prep. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so we're here inside of Tableau Prep 2022.2. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to a CSV for the first example. Let's go ahead and select text file over here on the connections pane on the left hand side. And for this, I've actually got some crime data and we're gonna connect to just one of these files. And uh, once we've done that, we're gonna uh, see what this feature can do for us. Now, when you connect to a file in Tableau Desktop, when you connect to a CSV, typically you might be used to seeing the other CSV files that you find here on the left. And you might think that's where you need to go to for this particular feature to see how to union other tables that are essentially in the same folder. Instead, you need to go to the tables tab just over here and select union multiple files. And that enables this feature. And you can see the new interface that we've got. Uh, you've essentially got two sets of filters. In this first example for CSV, we can only really see one of the filter types. So that's file filters. And that's essentially what this feature is about. Essentially this filtering area allows you to add a criteria to tell Tableau Prep which of these CSVs you want to bring in. So let's start by playing around with this. First of all, let's go ahead and select add file filter. And you can see that I get uh, five criteria, file name, file size, creation date, and modification date. The other criteria that we get, that I, I, that's why I said five, is actually where to search up here. So those are essentially the criteria. You've got the four file attributes as well as the folder in which you're searching, and that makes five. Now for each of these, you do get a subset as well. So for example, if we go back here to file size, I can do it by range or by rank. I can do it by creation, range, relative, and rank and same with modification date. So essentially there's a type of um, filter type for each particular data attribute. So file size is just you know, a range because it's looking at the size uh, and dates have ranges relative and rank because you can sort using the date as well. So let's uh, also look here at the search uh, box at the top because when I select the search in folder, it actually shows me like a hierarchy of the folder structure that I'm actually currently in. So if I select crime, which is the subfolder I'm in, that crime folder is inside a data folder called prep sample data, which is in a folder called 2022-2 demo, which is on my desktop, which is on my computer, which is owned by me. So <laughs> this uh, criteria allows you to sort of go up and down the directory and really sort of customize things. The further up you go, the more of your computer you're searching. And in essence, the more trouble you could get into if you tell Tableau Prep to search all subfolders. I'll stick it to the crime folder now and let's just have a look at our first filter. We'll call this file name and I'll show you how that works. Now the file name filter has a match criteria at the, at the top. So you can either find something that matches or doesn't match. So it allows you to search in both ways, define what you're looking for or define what you want to avoid. And that way it will pick up anything that matches that. So let's uh, look at matches. And what we can see here is we've got a, a file that talks about crime data. And in essence, it's got a specific sort of naming structure for different types of files in different areas. So let's say I wanted to go and find all the historical uh, crime data. There's essentially two here, one by LSOA and one by Ward. And so you might wonder, well, how do I just go find just the historical data files and look at them? Uh, I don't know if whether they're in the same uh, data structure. I don't know anything about them, but I just want to bring them all together. Well, for this one, what I would probably do is type a star. Then I would type historical um, or just historic, actually historic and then add a, enter another star and what you're basically saying is go and find anything that has the term historic anywhere in the file name and if i hit enter you'll see that it returns those three files um this one uh has historical this one has historical this one has historic that's why i typed historic if i'd typed historical I would not have necessarily got back that last one. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that last one doesn't match because the term it's looking for is not historic. It's historical. And that was only, you know, referencing historic. So that's how this false uh, criteria works. In in something like all tricks, you, you're also able to say, look, go and get every CSV by just putting star.csv. In this particular case, I could just give it that criteria. I could just say star.csv and hit enter and it would show me everything in the folder, but that's basically as good as just not having a search criteria. So you don't need to do that. You can just go ahead, look at the folder and if you're happy with everything, you can just hit apply and it will go and pull everything in. 
Now, the thing to remember here is you're unioning these files. So you are going to need to make sure you've got a common uh, data structure between them. Otherwise, you're going to create yourself a bit of a challenge inside of Tableau Prep to clean this up and make it work really, really well. So that's the first filter. That's a file name filter. The file size filter is really, really good. Um, again, uh, this isn't rocket science. When you choose range of sizes, you also get the ability to use less than or less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. That's just part and parcel of it. What I like about this filter is that they do correctly sort of aggregate up the file specification for you. So kilobytes to megabytes to gigabytes to terabytes. But weirdly, when they show you the size down here, it's only shown in bytes. So I'm thinking this is a bug. This is something to do with launch day. If not, this would be a really nice sort of area of improvement. I can't do uh, bytes to kilobytes to megabytes to gigabyte conversions in my head, uh, specifically because on some computers, let's say if you're on a Mac, it counts megabytes and gigabytes differently to how a Windows computer counts it, which is in multiples of 1024. So uh, it's just something to kind of uh, bear in mind that this would be a really nice sort of thing to use. But nonetheless, the search criteria is pretty flexible. You can go ahead and say, look, bring me back anything that is going to be at the moment it's zero to one terabyte again i would love this to pre-select the largest file size that it can see so for example here if i say in megabytes let's say um give me back everything that is up to 30 megabytes hit enter you'll see that everything up to 30 comes back and it's quite dynamic it's quite real and um, as you as you type it doesn't update in real time but when you hit enter it updates again and you can see sort of files sort of dropping off as i do that as well so that's the uh, criteria for file size. Let's go ahead and delete that, add another one, creation date and modification date. These are just date ranges. They'll both do the same thing. So I'll just show you how one of them works. Range of dates allows you to pick a start date and an end date. Again, I don't understand why this starts at 1972. The hack here is not to do the drop down and then start sort of clicking through. Uh, you might come here and try and click on this to type it. You can't. The trick here is to just type the date in here if it's going to be faster. So you can just go ahead 2021 and then you start from a much, much more reasonable sort of time frame and you can get going. Um, the table here gives you a high level overview of those dates if you want to be able to filter. So that's really, really nice. Um, but in essence, you can uh, go ahead and choose whatever search criteria works for you. Just remember that everything that gets found here is always coming back. When you go ahead and hit apply, this will essentially pull everything in the view back into your prep flow, as well as the file that you basically selected. So that's a really nice uh, touch, a really nice way of working. Now, the other thing you can do, and it's probably um, not as obvious, and this is probably one of those places where this little left hand side interface is a little bit small now. Um, so what I might do is expand it a lot larger. I don't think I can change the middle table height. I'd love to sort of move that down, but it feels a little bit cramped. So one, one trick I do is I just minimize Tableau Prep by hitting uh, Control minus or Command minus on the Mac. What that does is because Tableau Prep is a web application, it treats it like a browser and it just gives you this sort of illusion of creating more space because it makes everything smaller and spreads it out. So now it looks like I'm on a higher res res resolution screen, um, which isn't probably good for this video and you following along, but hopefully now you can see I've got a bit more space. I can go back to that more compressed view and I can continue to add more filters, whether it's by file name uh, or creation date. And you can see these are just stacking up. And as they stack up, you basically uh, reduce the list, at least in this case, to nothing. So nothing will come through. Um, but nonetheless, that's how it works. Okay. So I think I've, 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 I've really labored that point really, really hard. That was a CSV. Let me show you what happens when we connect to an Excel file. Okay. So let's connect to an Excel file. I'll go back here to the top. I'll hit a plus and we'll go ahead and select a Microsoft Excel file. And when we do this, let's just go back one. I think we need to go back to the prep sample data. And in this particular case, I've got uh, three files, Last FM data, bookshop, and sample superstore sales. I'm gonna select sample superstore sales for this particular one, not the data that everyone loves, but I'm gonna drag it in anyway, and we're gonna connect to it, go to tables, go to the same option, select union multiple tables, and now you can see the options that we have. Let me make this larger again. 
Now, the reason I want to show you this is because an Excel file has an additional search criteria that other files won't. So here you can see there's a worksheet filter as well as a file filter. So the file filters are what I've shown you already, uh, file name, file size, created, modified date, all that jazz. Worksheet filters, specifically for Excel files, allow you to also search a criteria for worksheet naming. And in this particular case, this will only have the worksheet name in this little drop down. So I can then go ahead and pull in specific worksheets. So if I just want to bring in the orders table, I can just go ahead and type that and it will only find the orders table in any worksheet if it's included in that Excel file. Okay. Now, the other thing this did when we came to this option, when you connect to an Excel file, uh, this is going to, I think, catch a few people out, is that it actually pre-filled the file name options here. So at the moment, what we're looking at is just one file. And you might think, oh, I can't go and look and open seven Excel files at the same time. That's actually not true. If you go ahead and clear this file search filter, you'll see that it thinks about it for a little bit longer because what it now has to do is go into the directory and file every Excel file. And once it's found every Excel file, look at every sheet in every Excel file, then pull through the data. And that's what you see here. You can actually pull through the different sheets inside of multiple Excel files. And that's really, really nice. So you can see here, I have some data for this bookshop and it's actually got sales Q1, Q2 and Q3 and Q4. That's actually what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and add a worksheet name um, uh, criteria and we'll just say anything that starts with a capital sales and ends however we want and hit search. And this is a little bit slower because I think it has to dynamically search those files again and again and again. And now you can see I've pulled the uh, sales data from the beta bookshop even though I connected to the sample superstore sales and now it's going to be uh, able to work so let's hit apply and once we've hit apply it's going to go ahead and bring all those in and you'll see tableau prep update here on the right hand side and now we've just got the sales and it's sort of pruned everything down and when we go ahead and look at the orders now it's connecting to that beta bookshop file even though I'm connected to sample superstore sales it's a really really weird um sort of uh, scenario to be in. I have found that this takes a little bit longer because again, it's having to do this by uh, talking to the files and it does what you'd expect prep to do, which is to give you the table names and the file that the file is coming from. So this is something that we'll do every single time. Um, every, even if it's a CSV, it will tell you the table name, which is essentially going to be the file for CSV. But for this in Excel, you're going to get all the uh, different file names if you do connect to multiple files over here on the right hand side. So that's a really, really nice touch. Now let's say you want to connect to a database. I've actually jumped ahead here and I've connected to my Snowflake instance. You might think you get these abilities with tables in a database like this. So you might want to maybe dynamically search for multiple tables like here, union them together and bring them in. This is actually not a currently supported feature. So this feature only works for uh, CSV files, Excel files, and statistic files. Those are basically the only file types that this will work for. Hopefully in the future, you get this capability with other tables inside of a database, but it's predominantly targeted at flat files, essentially. So that's going to be the only parameters where this works. It won't work um, as you think um, with a database. Here I'm connected to Snowflake with some sample data, and you see I don't get any option to uh, bring it in. I just get the old sort of... Um, uh, sampling method capabilities and I can sort of make some changes to this particular uh, window here on the right hand side but in terms of settings this this is this is really all I'm getting I don't have much more than just the ability to select one thing at a time and so that's pretty much um, it for this particular feature with databases so unfortunately not much to add a couple of things just to be uh, sort of aware of when you do connect to something using this feature and you get it working and everything's good, you do get this little plus icon that lets you know that that is actually bringing in multiple tables and unioning them, unioning them together. You don't get that if you don't do that. So just as a simple example, if I select on this file and I was to go back up to the top and I was to select a single table, you'll see that the icon disappears. And if I go ahead and select that option there, only once I've actually successfully hit apply, does the icon appear here for you to see? So that's an icon that only happens again when you successfully complete the operation. Nice little quirk to be aware of. Another thing I just want to highlight is that it's actually possible to 
With this feature, connect to one file, but pull in data from a completely different file, which makes troubleshooting a little bit more tricky. Uh, I've actually already done that in front of you, and you maybe didn't realize. Um, you can see here that I actually originally connected to the sample EU Superstore Excel file, but then inside of the search criteria, I actually went and pulled the files from the bookshop.xlx file, which is in the same folder as the Superstore files, and then I pulled in cells Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. That's where that was actually coming from. And so if you go look at the uh, prep output um, and actually look at this, you'll see that there's nothing coming from my Superstore cells. You can actually see the bookshop data here just above my head. Um, it's the only file that's coming in. So that's that, that to me is like one of those uh, weird mind mazes, right? Like how is it that you can connect to a file that you never intended to connect to in the first place? Well, this sort of scenario exists. And so if you're having to troubleshoot your prep flow and this is what's going on, this is a exactly what's happened. Essentially, someone's connected to one file, then decided to pull something from another file, and uh, that's basically where it's going. Now, what is interesting about this is if I go in and edit, what I'm not sure about is whether it's going to be expecting the beta bookshop.xlx or the sample EU superstore uh, store.xlx. In essence, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just switch the connection and see what that does. So if I double click on that, and we'll let it sort of do its thing, uh, I think the search criteria will still apply itself to that, and you can actually see that it's actually working as you would expect. It's 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 um, it's intelligent. It, you can see it's highlighting first of all the four things that are pulling through, even though I wasn't connected to that in the first place. And now this is still obviously running completely fine. So it's good that it you know degrades beautifully and it still shows you what it's supposed to um, if you're just not connected to the specific file in question you won't see that over here on the left hand side I guess that's the sort of downfall of this connect to the right file you'll see the right things if you don't connect to the right file subsequently pull in something from another file then you won't see it here on the left when you really should because you want to know that cells q1 q2 q3 and q4 are being brought into the flow as well and that's also a nice touch i don't believe i saw that previously with the excel files because again we didn't see this tabular view but again if you're using excel it's really nice that you get these uh, four files here highlighted in blue to tell you that they're actually being used in the flow so that was another quirk that I sort of discovered. I didn't, I didn't really know where in the demo to show you this, but definitely something to highlight um, in this video. Um, yeah, this is it. This is the feature pretty much in a nutshell. Um, let me know what you think of this. I think this is a a long time coming. This is, this is one of those features where you see it and you're like, oh, about time. Thank God, you know. It's one of those kinds of features that just makes that a little bit easier to work with. Uh, specific use cases where you have to handle a lot of unwieldy files um, together with some of the previous changes as well you know prefixes and suffixes as well it's just starting to feel like tableau prep is now starting to get into its stride and can be seriously considered for at least light to medium data prep nothing too heavy just yet all the heavy stuff i'd still do in all tricks but a lot of the time I am starting off in Tableau Prep and it's doing the job perfectly fine. In fact, it's a lot nicer to use than other tools as well that I'm comfortable with. So I'm actually quite enjoying it. Let me know what you think of the feature below. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see done with this feature. Um, let me know what ideas you come up with. It's, it's always great to have um, people watching the videos, comment, give us use cases and share their ideas with others. Sometimes even I forget things as well. So that's a really nice way to add to the discussion. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.